foundation. I want to try to talk about hearing God's voice right. amidst a dim light. All right. All right. How do we hear God's voice when the light is growing dim? Thank you so kindly. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are indebted to the book of 1 Samuel for giving us this revelation. One can talk hour about light. Right. Light. Light is elusive. Light is captivating. Light is revealing. Light is clear. Light is illuminating. The first miracle, the first act that God performed on this globe was when he divided the light from the darkness. Light. Light is associated with knowledge. This is why when you learn they call it enlightenment. Come on now. Right. And when you matriculate, when you attend college, Professor Bear, they say that the light of knowledge is being lit. Thank God for light. Amen. Where does light come from? Where, 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 where is the source of light? In the cosmos, the sun that was hung 93 million miles away, that was lit by the hand of an omnipotent God. Uh -huh. Only God could make a son. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Here's something for you to think about. What I love about Jesus, he's the only one I know that have fingerprints on the sun mm, all right. and footprints on the cloud. <laughs> His fingerprints on the sun because he held the sun for Joshua. Right. Yeah. And his footprints on clouds, for he stepped on a cloud uh -huh. when he ascended back to glory. Yeah. 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 I'm talking about about light. Uh -huh. Light comes from the geostation orbit. Light comes from the aurora stratosphere. Light. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Light, it takes it eight minutes and 17 seconds when it leaves the face of the sun to enter into our atmosphere. All right. 186,000 miles per second 
is 300,000 kilometers a second. All right. That means in one hour, light can travel 671 million miles in one hour. All right. Come on. This is based on the theory of relativity by Einstein. All right. If I had somebody praying with me. Come on. All right. Light, 186 thousand miles per second that means it can circle this terrestrial ball seven times within the blink of your eye. All right. All right. All right. I'm talking about about light. On, uh -huh. Light is captivating Light is liberating. Or yes, yes. if a room or a closet is captivated by darkness, uh -huh. when you flip on the light, yeah. it eradicates and it sets free, it liberates the room or the containment where darkness once was. Yeah. Right. 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 Now, uh, light can be used as a verb, okay. but it also can be used as a noun. All right. Right. As an example, uh, when we learn, we come into enlightenment. Uh -huh. Here's something for you to take home with you. If light is knowledge mm -hmm. and wisdom, uh -huh. then darkness mm -hmm. is associated right. with foolishness right. and <laughs> ignorance. Yeah. 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 Now come in a little closer. All right. Right. No wonder they call the devil the prince of darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Deacon Jones, why do they call him the prince of darkness? Prince means first. The king who has a son, the firstborn son is the prince. If you have a daughter, the firstborn daughter is a princess. So now prince represents first. And if darkness represents ignorance or foolishness, Sister Lee, for him to be the prince of darkness, that means he was the first fool. Y'all yeah. 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 over here, they quiet over here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God for light. Yeah. And uh, every day we ought to be searching and scanning the horizon yeah. trying to ascertain ascertain light yeah. Yeah. here I am 60 60 years old this year I'll be 60 years old mm -hmm. been preaching since I was five mm -hmm. matter of fact Laura and Vicki they remember my grandfather putting me up in a chair I used to preach at St. Paul on 43. Been doing this a long time, but my point I'm trying to make is, no matter how old you get, you ought to always be trying to reach enlightenment. Even, even now, I'm a student at ETBU. That's one of my professors right there, and thank you, Jesus, and my point is, I'm, I'm still trying to learn. Yeah. 
Uh -huh. Because the more I learn, the more I can educate All right. and help my congregation. All right. All right. Yeah. I got an amen. Yeah. Thank God for light. Yeah. And we ought to be of the opinion that uh, our light may not be a great light. But this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It may not be as great as the grand worship master, but let it shine. Your light may be a EA, a enter apprentice. It may not be a FC. A fellow craft. Uh -huh. Y'all ain't gonna talk. Come on, come on, come on. It may, it may, it may be a, a SW, a senior warden. It may not may, 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 may not be a, a JW, a junior warden. Uh -huh. It may only be the light of a deacon. It may not be as bright as a master mason. But let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. Uh -huh. I'm going to let it shine. Yeah. When you stand on the five points, my sister, <laughs> it may not be as bright as our daughter, the daughter of loyalty, a Ruth, the widow. A consistency. Come on, right. A Esther, the wife of fidelity. Yeah. A Martha, the sister of faith. Uh -huh. If I had the right uh -huh. point. Uh -huh. It may not be like that of Electra, uh -huh. the mother who exemplifies love uh -huh. and unity. Uh -huh. uh, your light may not be as bright as these women who are lived by the model we have seen his star and have come to worship him. If I had 10 folk helping me, I would preach. But I need you to touch somebody and tell them, let it shine. Well, it is faith Adoration, trust, intrusion, a loyalty, my sisters, let it shine. Brothers, those who have been raised from a dead level to a living perpendicular who have been caught by the eagle's claw and guarded by the lion's paw. Ain't nobody talking to me. I need you to touch three folk and tell them, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yay, Kuro Ba. Ha Shishima TL So mo it be. I'm gonna let it shine. Let me let y'all alone. Y'all ain't saying Ladies and gentlemen, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Alright. Come on. And ladies and gentlemen. We could talk long about light. Uh -huh. But now what about when the light grows dim? Oh. Uh -huh. What about when the light fades away? Yeah. What about when time takes the pep out of your step? Oh. The vim out of your limb? Yeah. You get up and go, have gotten up and gone. When you find yourself sitting on the edge of the bed, 
and don't know whether you're getting in or getting out. I wish y'all would. What, 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 what do we do when our light grows dim? There is a narrative in 1 Samuel uh -huh. chapter 3. Right. Y'all ought to write that down. Verses 2 through 4. And it talks about two characters. It talks about a, a old man, Eli, uh -huh. on the one hand. Yeah, yeah. And a young man, Samuel, Hold up. on the other hand. Uh -huh. And between the old man young man was a table yeah. and minister Godfrey on the table was a candle uh -huh. All right. and on top of that candle was a wick y'all right. right. know about a wick oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and on top of that wick was a flickering flame yeah. that was about to go out and when it looked like all hope was lost, yeah. it was then that God spoke yeah. when their light was just about ready to go out. Yeah. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe somebody in here feel like your lamp about to go out. Arthritis, rheumatism, congested heart failure. You go to your oncologist, taking chemotherapy and dialysis, rheumatoid arthritis, and you can't see. The cataracts have blinded you, yeah. your eyes, yeah. and yeah. Mm -hmm. you can't hear uh -huh. like you used to. Right. Right. I'm waiting on somebody to touch somebody and yeah. tell them my, my lamp yeah. is about going out. Yeah. I need you to look back at them and tell them mine too. Yeah. You live long yeah. enough, yeah. your lamp will go out. Yeah. Now, 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 Brother Ray, I want to contrast the old man to the, uh, to the younger man. Uh -huh. Now, now, God calls Samuel. All right. Uh -huh. And because at New Vision, our motto is, this is the church, where the word is explained, mm -hmm. Jesus is proclaimed, All right. love is exchanged, and your vision is made plain. Meaning when you come here, we don't just hoop and holler and start hollering, I know y'all right. We don't do that here. I want you to learn something. This is what we will learn today. God called him. The question, a long time ago, Dr. Mangrum at Bishop College said to us, good preaching is asking good questions. So now, let me stimulate your cerebral for a moment. And let me ask you how many different calls that we will hear in life. The correct answer is there are five calls that you, 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 and I will hear. All right. You ought to write them down. <laughs> Number one, there is the call of conception. That's when mama and daddy heard Luther and Teddy Pendergrass. 
and they got together and whooped that you can. The call of conception. And then secondly, there is the call of birth. Yeah. Nine months later, after you've gone through the third trimester, when mama's water break. Yeah. Yeah. And the doctor grabbed you and for no reason he hit you. <laughs> and you have one or two choices. You can either holler or swallow. <laughs> That's the call of birth. Uh -huh. But now the third call is the call of repentance. The call of accountability, usually around 12 years of age, you are held accountable for your action. That's when you come into awareness of who you are and what you are not. That's the third call. Then there's the fourth call, the call of your purpose. Everybody ought to have a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If you don't know your purpose, you like a ship just going round and round without a rudder. Yeah. Right. A ship without a sail. Yeah. The reason why Bill Gates and Elon Musk and Martin Luther King and W.E.B. Du Bois and Harriet Thutman and Maya Angelou the reason why they were successful and are successful, they have discovered their purpose. The reason why your nephew is sitting under a tree with a 40 ounce, <laughs> sipping on gin and juice, smoking sticky icky, playing a video game, that's somebody who do not know. <laughs> You need to know your purpose. Show me a church thriving and going up. I'll show you a church that have a pastor that know his purpose. Show me a church that's decreasing and ain't doing nothing. And I'll show you a church following somebody blind. And if the blind lead the let me let y'all know. The fourth call is the call of purpose. Yes. All right. The fifth call is the call of death. Yeah. Yeah. Now you sit here pretty long as you want to. Mm -hmm. Know you got money and drive nice cars mm -hmm. and you're well educated. But one day death yeah. is going to call our name. Yeah. Folk younger than you have more than you. Death call their name. And this is why we ought to love folk and not walk around like we better than somebody else. We ought to want to treat people. Sometimes you have to treat them better than they treat you. Because one day death is going to call our name. But then there's one more call. Malachi, if I could die and that be the end of it, uh -huh. I could do people any kind of way. Yeah. But there's another death, there's another call, the call of judgment. Yeah. That's the sixth call. Yeah. Oh, you ain't got to believe me, Tanya. It is once appointed unto every man to die. Yeah. Come on, y'all, help me. And after death, the judgment. Can I get a good amen in the house? And then there is the final call. And that final call is the resurrection. One of these days, and an angel Gabriel split the air and poked the mouth of that harmonic trumpet uh -huh. through the milky white way. Yeah. And whatever note he blows, he gonna blow it calm and easy. Right. And the dead in Christ yeah. 
she arrived. They arise first and be caught up to meet him in the air. So now, ladies and gentlemen, these are the calls that you, 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 and I, these are the calls, Jarvis, that we will hear. Samuel heard the call. He was a young man. Wow. Eli was an old man. Uh -huh. Samuel was a young, man. young whippersnapper. <laughs> but he heard that call. Yeah. We were introduced to Samuel when he was uh, prayed about. His mother, Hannah, prayed right. about him before he was born. She said, right. Lord, if you give me a male child, I give him back to you. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. And the Lord answered her prayer, and Samuel was born. Yeah. Now, it's going to add five more minutes to the sermon because I'm feeding you, but the feeder is feeding me. Yeah. All right. and, and now, because good preaching yeah. is asking good questions. Good questions. You ought to want to ask yourself, how many different types of births are there? You might want to write this down. Number one, there is the Sawyer birth. Because Adam came from the ground. Adam shows us the Sawyer birth. And then secondly, the surgical birth. The first C-section was not in a woman, it was in a man. Because the Lord opened the side of Adam and pulled Eve out of, I wish I had somebody, out of the side of Adam. So this is the surgical birth. But then the third birth is the sack birth. Uh -huh. Because Eve carried Cain and Abel in her womb. Uh -huh. This is the sack birth. birth. Uh -huh. But then Jesus was born. Uh -huh. Without a man, without a human, the next birth in the Bible is the, come on now, is the supernatural birth. Because Joseph was the stepdaddy, Jehovah was the father. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. Super natural, natural. natural. birth. Right. Yeah. Now, if you can't shout on them, you ought to be able to shout on this. The last birth is the spiritual birth. Yeah. Because if you are born again, yeah. that which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. If you born again, you have a spiritual birth. Yeah. 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 I'm waiting on somebody to touch somebody, tell them, I'm glad I'm born again. And here is Samuel. Pray for by his mother. And he's born. And God calls him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You can tell when I'm through preaching, all the members know when look. <laughs> you want to know what irritates me? When I hear somebody up saying, and I'm closing, and I'm closing. Ten minutes go by, and I'm closing, and I'm closing. Twenty minutes go by. I want to say, Negro, would you sit down? <laughs> Closes you gonna do? <laughs> but when I close my Bible, uh -huh. you know I'm done. Amen. God called him. God called him when the light was flickering. Uh -huh. Eli is old man, and his eyes have grown dim. Yes. Can't do what he used to do. 
But yet God was speaking. Amen. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And here is uh, Samuel who was green. Mm -hmm. Who was a novice. Just starting out. Yeah. Still wet behind the ear. Yeah. And yet God called him. Yeah. Now let's go deeper. Let's go deeper and see what we we learn. You tell me when you're ready. Come on. Eli was the last priest of the Leviticus order. All of the priests came from the tribe of Levi. Uh -huh. So now Levi, who had two sons, and they were bad boys, uh -huh. Levi is the last priest. Come on close now. Right. Samuel is the first prophet. All right. All right. Hallelujah to the king. Yeah. So now what God is doing, God is getting ready to connect the past right. to the future. Yeah. He's going to use the light of knowledge, the light of enlightenment uh -huh. as a cohesive, as a glue yeah. Yeah. to connect and intertwine yeah. your yesterday yeah. to your tomorrow. Y'all yeah. ain't with me. You do know, you do know that there were 17 prophets. Yeah. Uh -oh. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Jose, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Rebecca, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and yeah. Malachi. Yeah. Yeah. But the first prophet was a little boy yeah, yeah. by the name of, of Samuel. Yeah. Let's go deeper. What are you trying to show us, Lord? The lesson is showing us Listen now. That God have a way of connecting yes, yes. age and youth. Uh -huh. God shows us here that we need each other. Yes. Come on now. You got an old man who can't hear, but yet he understands. And you got a young man who can hear, but he don't understand. This is why when you plow, you don't put two mules together that are young or two mules that are old. If you put two mules together that are young, they're going to tear up everything. And if you put two old mules together, you ain't going to get nothing done. And this is why when it comes to the church, uh -huh. the Bible says old man are for counsel. Right. And young man is for war. Right. So what that means, young man, if you want to be wise. You need to walk with the wise. Yeah. Surround yourself with the wise. Yeah. You need to be around somebody that can tell you something. Yeah. And if you feel like you know everything, you're in bad shape. Yeah. Yeah. Mother Ruth sitting there. That's she. Wave your hand, Mama Ruth. <laughs> I pastored Mother Ruth when I was 21. Right. 22. Mm -hmm. Mama Jean, raise your hand, Mama Jean. They don't look like they 80 years old, do they? 79 and 80. Y'all give them a hand. Don't they look good? 80 plus, come on. I pastored these members. 40 years ago, 
They'll testify once a week, sometime every other day. I call them. Because I want to get some wisdom. How the church going? What do you see we need to do? Give me some advice. Help me out. Because I don't know everything. And when you don't know everything, wisdom is having the sense enough to know that you don't know everything. Come on, help me, brother. You see, our young folk today have computers and gigabytes and internet, and they have what they call knowledge. Come on, but in this world, you need more than knowledge. You need what the old folk call mother wit. And that's wisdom. Let me hear somebody say, knowledge you limit yourself. Say it again, knowledge you limit yourself. The first part of the word knowledge is know. K-N-O-W, know. The second part of knowledge is ledge. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how much you know, you're just standing on the ledge. <laughs> Wait a minute. Erase the L off a ledge, you got edge. So no matter how much you know, you're standing on the ledge and you can fall over the edge. <laughs> You need to get with somebody that know more than you. And old people need to understand that I can't do what I used to do. And it's wisdom on the older people part to train somebody to take your place. You're not going to be secretary always. You ought to have a young girl a young teenager uh -huh, uh -huh. training her. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Take your place. Right. Yeah. You're not going to be the recording secretary always. Yeah. Who are you training? Yeah. Take your place. Mm -hmm. You chairman of the Deacon Bar? You think you're going to be chairman from now on? No. <laughs> Who are you training? Yeah. If you ain't training somebody, you're drying up on the vine. Dying on the vine. Help me, bro. Ray, you got my back, don't you? And a whole lot of churches are suffering from people who don't want to let go. Tell your neighbor, don't dry up on the vine. Tell them, don't. You ought to be training somebody. Yeah. To take your place. Amen. Amen. So Samuel, Amen. you are the future. Amen. Eli, you are the past. When I say past, don't look at it as being negative. It means your season has come to an end. And Samuel, this is the beginning of your season. And for God to pull them together around a lamp with a flickering flame, what God is trying to show them and show us that he's a God that can shift your situation. I sit down now by saying, I don't care how bad the situation look. He can shift your situation. Doctor said, I'm in stage four cancer. God can shift. I'll get some witnesses. I don't care what the doctor said. Sometimes the doctor dead and gone and the patient is still. Do anybody know that he can shift? Your situation. Some of y'all on the outside. 
and he brought you on the inside, yes. shifted your situation. Yes. Some of y'all had badness and now you got gladness. Yes. Shifted your situation. Yes. Some of y'all were homeless and now you're a homeowner. Yes. He shifted your situation. Have you ever helped somebody when they got on their feet to act like they didn't know you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they didn't have nothing. They were running all behind you. And they get two nickels to rub together. Now they want to act like they're all that. But how many of y'all know like God put them up there? He can turn it around but they have to come back to you. Yeah. God will shift your situation. God spoke in the midst of a dim situation. And so I close now. I do. <laughs> I saw two folks sleep. I said, that your eyes buck wild. <laughs> we, 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 we have a whole lot of fun over here. But in a dim situation, God shifted and turned that situation around. And it all because, because God spoke and Samuel heard him. And like God spoke then, he's still speaking. God is speaking constitutionally. The note in the message a revelation. God is speaking Vicariously denoting the medium of revelation. God is speaking universally. I'm ready to go now. Indicating the magnitude of revelation. God is speaking savingly. Demonstrating the motive of revelation. God is speaking finally. Expressing the maximum of revelation. So now what we got to do in these dim days. What we have to do. In these reckless times, yeah. we need to make sure that we hear the voice of our God. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And no wonder they said in the old church, I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come on to me and rest lay down the weary one lay down the head upon my breast I came to Jesus as I was weary wound and say found in him a resting place and he made me glad. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. This love, light of mine, yeah. I'm gonna let it shine. Yeah. Everywhere I go, yeah. I'm gonna let it shine. Yeah. Shine yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Shine in the evening. Yeah. Shine about me. Shine with tears in my eyes. 
shine when I feel like giving up. Shine this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Will you let it shine? Will you let it shine? Shine. Keep shining for Jesus. God bless you. Keep shining. Keep shining for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Air condition. I took my voice, but I won't let my light shine. Can I get you to just touch somebody and tell them right now, keep shining. Y'all ain't moving. Tell them, keep shining. Keep listening for God's voice. Even in a dim situation. Y'all ain't moved yet. Some of y'all there. Tell them, keep listening to God's voice. Even in a dim situation. If this bless you, put your hands together. And give God the best praise. Well, this love. 